everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And today we have another non-Hallmark uh, Christmas movie uh, recap. We're talking about the other networks, Lifetime, BT, Apple TV. Uh, it's going to be super fun. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Michelle is here. Hey, everyone. And our friend Jasmine is joining us today. <laughs> hello, hello. I am back. How are you guys doing? Yeah, doing good. How are you? I'm not really good. It's been a long week, but I've just been catching up with all these movies. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. This is a strong group. Uh, I mean, Lifetime has been killing it. They really only have had one dud. All of their movies have been been good i think to great so it's it's gonna be fun we're talking about four from lifetime we have an apple tv movie and then a bt movie so it should be fun but do you agree michelle that lifetime has been crushing it yeah yeah for sure when i was looking at the screeners and watching them i did realize that i had already seen two of them Mm -hmm. um there were movies from last year like i explained a little bit like over in the uk we have several different channels that get tv movies and you just sort of have to wade through them and try and find the new ones or the ones that you're seeing so yeah there was two that i had already seen one coming up uh sort of next week um and one and, and one this week so yeah it's sort of interesting in that sense but I didn't remember the movie, but as I was watching, I was like, oh, yeah, this is super cute. Yeah. I'm excited to talk about this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially that one because you're such a dog person. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Jasmine, what about you? Do you think that this season in general, not just Lifetime, but just the Christmas movie scene in general, has been pretty strong so far? It has been strong so far. I've been blown away. Am I sitting here like, how is this? happening where I am enjoying majority of these movies except for like there's no hit and miss ones but I've been enjoying every one of these movies where I'm actually can I get a sequel what happens next like can we get the sequels right now so yeah. I'm kind of, kind of worried I'm like are we on this movie but not even a sequel compared to other either Hallmark or Lifetime or any other networks with sequels but I feel like they're gonna they're starting to build a sequel around certain movies yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard because it, usually these movies struggle with sequels because it's like they can't figure out sort of what to do next after the couple's together. Like, what's the next story? But there have been some good ones. Occasionally, there'll be a, a pretty good sequel. But uh, but let's dive in. Let's talk about it. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Christmas on Mistletoe Lake. This uh, was on the 10th uh on lifetime and it starred janelle williams Corey sevier and robert dune is the writer and director and it says interior designer riley finds herself this christmas in the town of mistletoe lake with no place to stay she accepts an offer from ray to stay in his boat helping him renovate the boat for the town's christmas harbor festival so michelle overall what do you think about this one um, I really liked this one. I really enjoyed it. I was a little nervous when the whole concept of the boat thing because I yeah. was thinking of the Katie Sackhoff movie and I was like, oh my god, like it's just not gonna live up to that. Um, because that that one I just really loved a lot. Yeah. Um good. but I really like Corey. Um and what was the movie last year that <laughs> Uh, uh, well, gosh. he was just so I, good. I, I know what you're everything. talking about. It was was it the Christmas Louisiana when they did the boat? I remember something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a little nervous. But I was so glad that this movie has so much more going on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really, really like this one, and I feel like we also just saw a different side of Corey as well because I feel like he's just been playing really angsty characters lately and it was nice to see him sort of let loose a little bit in this in this one well that's true because he was just in noel next door where he was kind of he was supposed to be sort of a scrooge type and uh so and and but then we also saw him in pumpkin everything so he's just been killing it lately (laughs) he's been really good Yeah. Uh, what did you think of this one overall, Jasmine? No, I at first I thought, okay, this is getting kind of slow, but it picked up right when she got into the town. And I was like, I'm loving it from like the karaoke scenes to the dad jokes um, to the mm-hmm. daughter being a matchmaker. Like, I'm going to have the dinner, the dishes and 
you guys can have like you know your wine outside i'm like wait a minute you over here being a matchmaker i'm like you too grown but okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But but no, it did remind me of um, last year movie uh, in like kind of like the Christmas movie Indiana and also the other um, Hallmark movie from last year that was on um, um, Miracles of, of Christmas when they have like the, their own version of the harbor. Um, yeah, in that... the boat. I can't, mm-hmm. can't think of the name of it. I remember the movie for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um... There was another one. It, I mean, there was the the Katie Sackoff one, Christmas Sale, right? I think. Yes, that what it was, yeah. Christmas Sale. Yes, yeah, that one was really good. And then I feel like there's even another one that used the 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 one boat. was uh, was that Helen Barton? Or well, it was the yeah that, that, that would Helen be Christmas in Louisiana, one. yeah, on Lifetime, yeah. So it. it I, I thought this was was cute. I, it was a little slow at times. The pacing was a little slow. But, but I, I mean, I wrote that it was a little boring, but so warm hearted. You couldn't help but like it. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't like miss out on a, you know, a scene of like fashion montage. Like I'm like, thank mm-hmm. you for like a little 90s fresh off. <laughs> yeah. <bit." laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. And of course you have Robin Dune in this. He was the writer director and here he's the, you know, kind of the big bad man of business uh, and uh, that's going to buy out the Harbor and going to renovate this beautiful boat and make it modern. <laughs> Why would anybody want to do that? <laughs> you see the green, they see the green in all of it. Uh, yeah. Um, one of my favorite scenes in the movie was the uh s'mores roasting on the beach uh making s'mores scene so that was very mm-hmm. cute very cuddly yeah. cozy <laughs> i like the sort of self-referential part of her sort of saying that she's from quote the city <laughs> oh yeah yeah you're pretty uh, i guess not everything in the city is bad yeah that was funny <laughs> i also liked uh the whole thing with uh your soap opera name is your mm-hmm. middle name plus the place oh. you grew up and so for me it would be uh <laughs> it would be my soap opera name if we're talking about the uh the street name that i grew up on uh it, w- it would be my soap opera name would be amy penn that's my middle name and and i grew up on penn street uh what about you, Jasmine? What's your soap opera name? My soap opera name will be Shereen Janet. Nice. <laughs> I think that could be good. We can like, do I feel, it. I feel like I'm fancy now. I feel like I'm like, I'm like this like, <laughs> old money situation. It's yeah. the Janices. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> what about you, Michelle? What's your soap opera name? Uh, it would be Rose Rain. Oh, that's the best Ooh. one. It was. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. That was cute. Because uh, I think I might be wrong that Corey Sevier has soap experience. So that was that was fun. But uh, and he says, like, how is someone like you single? Because <laughs> he's, <laughs> he, he's one of those like you talk about, Michelle, that it's just like pretty much gone from the beginning. The moment he's yeah. there, he's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And they have a they have this kiss in front of the lighthouse. And they're I mean, it almost went on too long. I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> Mind <laughs> you, this kiss happened like 45 minutes into it. Usually it hits like that hour, hour and a half mark. But I'm like, we're getting it like 45 minutes in. Keep doing was, you. <laughs> yeah, it was early, but the 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 back and forth between like the legend of the mistletoe and was it created here and back and back. I'm like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of preamble to the kiss going on uh but it, it was still pretty fun and uh yeah his dad jokes the karaoke night was interesting <laughs> yeah <laughs> none of these saw can you imagine so they did silent night 12 days of christmas oh christmas tree and uh we wish you a merry christmas but i feel like none of those songs are rocking out of karaoke night Mm, definitely not <laughs> i don't know if they have like this karaoke like christmas version i can definitely see that because you know there are a lot of people who are 100 in for christmas and nine and ten they're probably doing karaoke of christmas song at one of their parties yeah so. i could picture that but i think it would almost always be more modern songs but obviously those are uh those are you know copyright and expensive and everything uh i don't think that many people are picking the 12 days of christmas to to like rock out the bar <laughs> 
But mind you, they're at the bar. And they did yeah. have a little something, a little eggnog <laughs> with, with some brandy. Like they had to have something. Uh, plus, let Rock someone out. else sing. I mean, they're taking every song. <laughs> well, no, uh, hey, they they were the star focal. They were like they wanted an encore. They gave the encore. <laughs> so that one person did go up to go sing, and that and it wasn't it wasn't it. They were like <laughs> cut, like no more. Were, <laughs> it was funny. I I enjoyed it, but it just kind of made me laugh. I'm like. They didn't even want to sing at all. And then they're, they're doing like five songs in a row. <laughs> um, yeah. And they always use 12 days of Christmas in these movies. And it's it, because it's free, but it's the worst Christmas song, in my opinion. This are or my least, personal least favorite 12 days of Christmas and uh, the little drummer boy. Those are my least favorite. I don't know what yeah. what would you what would you pick Michelle to sing at the karaoke? Oh, I would never sing at karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. <laughs> uh, I would never sing at karaoke. As far as like my least favorite Christmas song, right now, like I've I've spent a lot about like I have a new job. I work in a store now, oh, and yeah. it's very Christmas themed right now. It's uh-huh. Christmas everywhere. We've got two sort of animated. We've got a big Santa at the door, a little elf at the door. They both sing and dance, and the two of them just on repeat constantly i work next to them we're not allowed to switch them off and it is it's slowly driving me insane <laughs> so rocking around the christmas tree i'm going to have to pick that because i've heard yeah. it about a million times <laughs> in the last month it's driving me insane but that would be way more likely of a song to have at karaoke yeah yeah for sure way more but uh but yeah and uh, then there's this whole conflict where the Robert Robin Dune guy is going to like renovate the boat and she like meets with him. And so he thinks that she's like in cahoots with him and he gets all offended. And then her sister doesn't help anything at all because he's like, Oh, okay. I, I see. I see your point. And then she comes and she's like, isn't it great? They're renovating this. whole." <laughs> way to like push the sister into the water like yeah. me, like you no i just cleared it up with him like yeah. you're good. then you bring on those extra stuff that you tell him about that i'm not even doing <laughs> yeah for real and then you know she says i would never become i would never become uh become between my sister and the guy she's in love with and he's like oh the guy you're in love with <laughs> That was cute, I thought. And uh, then they dance to a little town of Bethlehem, which is better than Silent Night, but still not my, not the best. <laughs> Remember, they're a small town. They don't get the top forty Christmas songs. <laughs> it just when you're singing a when you're slow dancing romantic to a religious like a one of the like Jesus songs, but it's a little weird. <laughs> A little awkward. A little awkward, <laughs> but not as awkward as Silent Night. Uh huh. But of course, Lewis, that's the Robin Dune character, he changes his mind. He comes around and, uh, and uh, then they win the big prize so they can keep the boat moored in the harbor and they can keep the boat. And, uh, there was like cute banter about like as soon as you your presence on the boat made it home. <laughs> like yes. <laughs> like technically it was Airbnb, but okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh and then uh and then she says, From the moment I met you and Emma, I knew I was home. And they find out that Emma's gonna get a big scholarship. Like they literally call the scholarship recipients on Christmas <laughs> Eve. Like that's <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I have to ask that same question. Like, you know, we are at family functions. <laughs> we, like, you are at home. These are lies. <laughs> I mean, I just feel bad for the person working at the school that has to do that on Christmas Eve. <laughs> they better got double time for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and this is when he says, "You're not a bad. You're not bad for a city girl." <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, this was pretty cute. Like I said, it was a little slow sometimes the pacing, but, 
but uh, especially when I, cause I watched it and then I uh, kind of clipped through it to, to, um, to write my notes. And I was mm-hmm. like, Oh, there were a lot of cute moments in this. <laughs> uh, so I would give this movie a uh, 3.75 out of five. Uh, what about you, Michelle? Um, I'd probably give it a three. Yeah, it's right in the middle for me. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Jasmine? This would definitely be a 3.5. All right, good. Yes. I thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the good folks at Baker Publishing Group. Looking for the perfect gift for the book lover in your life? Dive into some great dual-time novels this Christmas where the past intersects with the present. First up, we have By Way of the Moonlight by Elizabeth Musser. Allie Massey's dream to use her grandparents' estate for equine therapy is crushed when she discovers the property has been sold to a contractor. With weeks until demolition, Allie unearths some of Nana Dell's best kept secrets, including her champion filly, a handsome man, and one fateful night during World War II, and perhaps a clue to keep her own dream alive. Next, Where the Last Rose Blooms by Ashley Clark. More than a century apart, two women seek lost hope. Abolitionist Clara is determined to help an enslaved woman reunite with her daughter. Alice can't stop wondering what happened to her mother in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Faced with the unknown, both women will have to dig deep to let their courage bloom. Next, When the Day Comes by Gabrielle Meyer. Libby has been given a powerful gift to live one life in 1774 Colonial Williamsburg and the other in 1914 Gilded Age New York City. When she falls asleep in one life, she wakes up in the other without any time passing. On her 21st birthday, Libby must choose one path and forfeit the other. But how can she possibly decide when she has so much to lose? Then we have The Master Craftsman by Kelly Stewart. When Ava Lane's dying treasure hunter father entrusts to her his mission to find a missing Fabergé egg, she has no idea how high the stakes will climb or how her allegiances will be tested. Join the hunt in this lavish dual-time narrative that plunges you into the 1917 Russian Revolution, the fall of the Romanovs, and a long-buried Soviet secret. And finally, The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs. Kip by Sarah Brunsfold. Frustrated reporter Aidan Kelly begrudgingly agrees to help a hospice patient prepare her obituary, but old Claire Kipp has some incredible stories and some surprises up her sleeve that promises to make this seemingly throwaway assignment a life-changing one. So head over to bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash Hallmarkies to pick up one of these great books and use code Hallmarkies40 for 40% off these titles from November 14th to December 12th. That's bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash Hallmarkies and use code Hallmarkies40 for 40% off. The We have a couple more on Lifetime that you haven't seen, Jasmine. So I'm afraid, I hope that uh, we don't spoil it too much for you. Hopefully you but, do not, but I know for a fact that um, the reindeer game is definitely on my bucket list because I'm loving the commercial so far. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll hopefully, you can tell us how much we convinced you to watch it by our so that'll be your thing to say (laughs) so that's the next one up but reindeer games homecoming this uh is on lifetime on the 12th and it's starred sarah drew and justin bruning uh director brian herslinger writer sarah drew we have an interview with her it was super fun uh but the summary is Mackenzie Graves, a brilliant biology teacher in Vermont, recently lost her father, who was a beloved fire chief who ran the holiday fundraising tradition, the Reindeer Games. As she usually competes in his place, this year she's shocked to see fading Hollywood star and high school crush Chase Weston return home and is roped into competing. So, Michelle, what did you overall think of this one? Um, I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Um, I've already told you I will be amazed if Lifetime is able to top this for me personally. Uh-huh. Um, I, I'm so drawn to the more emotional movies, so this one just sort of feels sort of made for me. Uh-huh. Um, and I also feel like if you're a Grey's Anatomy fan, you'll be all in on this because of Sarah, but also Justin, and they played a couple on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always really liked their dima- dynamic, even though they weren't like Sarah Drew's character, April's main love interest. That was always Jackson. 
but her, uh, Justin's character Matthew was sort of in the mix and I just felt like they always had such an interesting dynamic and really good chemistry and I'm really happy that it was able to sort of translate onto um, this movie and I also really felt the sort of the script was beautiful like I cannot believe that you told me this was her first script or yeah it was like yeah, the it was first, first yeah, like, script unbelievable like the way she writes about grief um was just done so well and also did it really bring the movie down if you if you can understand what I'm saying like it didn't make the movie a downer um it was still very emotional and very fun and yeah I just absolutely love this movie yeah, it's excellent. One of my favorite of the year. It's uh, well suited. Is still my favorite, uh, <laughs> but uh, but and I don't know if anything will top that. It did get a perfect score from me. Uh, but yeah, uh, this was very good. I really enjoyed it, and I I do agree about their chemistry. It was really good. Uh, and, you know, talking about the grief and her uh, not being able to open up that envelope oh from my her God, dad, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last letter from him and, and then her help, him helping her to do that was very well done. Uh, mm-hmm. There are also a lot of really fun moments, like the, the, the different reindeer games were fun. Yeah, uh, yeah I felt nice like they were. Concept. Yeah, they were really creative with that. Um, because you have to, it must be so hard to do, do any of these movies. You have to do something original uh-huh. um, that hasn't been done, which is so impossible when there's like 300 new ones a year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I feel like I haven't listened to the interview yet um, because I'm still catching up in um, a lot of the reviews and I'm literally just finishing the preview shows from our podcast. <laughs> like That's how behind I yeah. am. But yeah, I imagine Sarah must have done a lot of research. Yeah, she on said Christmas that, movies. She said that her husband, uh, I forget which school it was, it was Dartmouth or some some place like that. Uh, she said that he he went to a school where they had like a winter games like this kind of thing. Interesting. And so that was sort of where she got the idea uh was from that. And uh, and I there were a lot of cute little cozy moments, like when she takes him up to that broadcast booth and they're mm-hmm. out, they're hanging out there and uh, remembering all of the, it, I was glad that they didn't overdo it with the teens, you know, kind of, cause sometimes when they have these like 40 year old actors play teens, it can be. Yeah. It can be brutal. It can be brutal. <laughs> 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 And it was cute, like the whole setup of the her like doing the crossword puzzles. Mm-hmm. And she said that in the interview, she said that a lot of that, uh, those attributes of Mac were based on her mother, that her mother's a big crossword uh, puzzle and riddle kind of person. And so, so you could feel that kind of closeness, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I actually thought this was like a Sarah thing. I was like... <laughs> Because it was such a big thing throughout the entire the entire movie, and I loved the way they sort of tied it in in the yeah. end as well. And it was yeah. really, really well done. It was cute, the scavenger hunt at the end. Yeah, so cute. Yeah, and it was funny when they're watching Twinkle all the way. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. yeah, was I love like, that. I really were... like to work with that director. <laughs> yeah that was so good they were like copying netflix a little bit trying to make themselves a lifetime cinematic universe yeah (laughs) Uh uh-huh and uh yeah they have a pretty early kiss in this movie that was i I wrote down wow kiss (laughs) yeah like (laughs) i was actually i was like oh my god (laughs) The way you make me feel, I like you make me feel like I can do anything. And he says, "When in I, when in the presence of greatness, you have to acknowledge it." <laughs> <laughs> and I loved that everything sort of post kiss was sort of him growing up, and you could actually see that. Yeah. Um, and her just not letting him away with um his behavior, um, the way that he'd sort of treated her in the past, whether it was intentional or not, she was very open with him and very yeah. like this isn't happening again <laughs> which I loved well and it's so swoon worthy when you have a guy like that that's so handsome 
like literally begging to be yeah. with you. He's like, please, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that is very romantic. <laughs> um, and because he had he had kind of ghosted her uh, mm-hmm. after they had this connection at this uh, camp or whatever. Uh, then mm-hmm. when they went back to school and and, and uh, he's, he, you know, he says, please give me, please, 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 please give me a chance to redeem myself. <laughs> uh, and then they have this whole ball hockey scene and uh and where she knocks him with the with the hockey puck <laughs> which was pretty funny and uh, did you have a favorite of the reindeer games um i think the hockey was probably my favorite i didn't really understand the sort of plunge one i thought they were doing like a swim originally i was like always oh, just a plunge um just a cool plunge <laughs> okay. yeah, i'm not sure how um, somebody wins that that's true that's uh, yeah i'm point. not sure yeah, I, was, I don't really understand. And we didn't actually see the ice sculpture and I thought we just sort of cut away and cut back to that. Um, so I feel like the most we saw was the hockey. So yeah, I'll, I'll pick that one. Yeah. Well, so her, I mean, his sister has a baby and that whole drive to the airport, I mean, the airport was wrong with me. That whole drive to the hospital was very funny and well done. And his nephew's like driving and freaking out and, and... <laughs> And then, uh, uh, and then, and he helps her open the envelope and then she's like, I can't do this because it's going to be too painful. So she leaves and then he's talking to his sister who just had a baby and she's like, she slaps him in the face and says, I told you not to be an idiot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So good. Especially because, because he just injured his head. (laughs) Yeah, and she's like, I just had a baby. I only have a, a minute to say this. <laughs> Listen. And uh, so that was fun. And and then we also get Simon coming. So he's kind of the the the, the friend, the BFF. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, after they have their big kiss, uh, he comes over and he's like, <laughs> he wants to know all the all the details. Uh, and then at the end, he comes over and he like he's like, "You're getting dressed up, put on this <laughs> this dress and these heels," and uh, that's when they do the scavenger hunt. Mm-hmm. And so that was fun. And uh, I always love it in these movies. I call it the stop kiss, like when somebody's just rattling on, talking, 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 and they're like, they just go for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. <laughs> And, uh, and you can see, I loved the fact that they, as soon as, so they have the kiss at the end and then immediately she starts to kind of overthink it because she also has just gotten, she decided to do her residency again. So she had opted out of it when her dad died and, uh, and now she's, she's signed up for it again. And then, so when they say, you know, that they want to be together. She all of a sudden, she starts thinking like, oh no, we've got all these, these conflicts. And, and he's like, don't overthink it. <laughs> he's like, I don't know how, but we'll figure it out because I love you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like that ending. So good. I feel like sometimes they try too hard to have the two people in the same place by the end. Um, when they come from different, you know, places in the world, um, I feel like they, they try a little bit too hard to sort of tie it up with a bow. Whereas real life isn't really like that. Um, and I like that this movie sort of acknowledged that, but was still able to have it be like a really sweet ending of like you you leave pretty confident that they're going to figure it out. Well, yeah, I mean, because I don't really love this as a conflict when it's like, we live in different places, so we can't fall in love. I'm like, no, no one, that wouldn't stop anybody from falling in love. A millionaire can fly wherever he wants. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He's a famous movie star. Yeah, especially for him. Uh, So in this case, I think it's exactly what you would say. If, if, If you were in love with somebody and they lived in a different place than you or they were doing a residency or whatever, you'd be like, we'll work it out, which is what you do so this is perfect and he says turn your brain off and jump that was cute Mm -hmm. yeah so what are you gonna give this one michelle oh this is a perfect score for me (laughs) yeah week two perfect scores 
Perfect score. I mean, uh, that's a very rarity. I mean, I love Well Suited so much. Um, it's close for me. Uh, what the heck? I also give this. I also give this a perfect score. I, this was an excellent movie. It was very well written. It was very well acted. Great chemistry. I mean, I don't know what else you really want in these kind of movies if you're watching Christmas movies. Uh, yeah. What else could you want in this kind of movie? Yeah. But uh, but what do you think, Jasmine? Did we convince you? This is very convincing me. One hundred percent. The fact that you get t- two five stars, I am one hundred percent in. And all I know is because this has not been mentioned yet. If these are reindeer games and they're not named after each reindeer, my heart will oh. be crushed. <laughs> oh, good point. <laughs> you can't call it a reindeer game without like naming all eight reindeers, including Rudolph, which makes it nine. That's true. Maybe you should take it down. Not a perfect score anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, since you're here, Jasmine, let's talk about, let's take a break from Lifetime for a second and talk about the first Noel on BT. And I'm curious you probably have more experience watching these kind of these movies on BT than I do. Um, are they usually a little bit on the melodrama, a little bit kind of soap opery, a little bit, would you say? Just a little bit. Yeah. You have to add a little spice, a little drama into the, the family uh, the, uh, dynamics of it all. Yeah. yeah. I felt that in the two that I've watched so far. I mean, this one it's, uh, it was on the 10th. It stars Novi Brown, Lala Milan, and Todd Anthony. It says, after 20 years of friendship, Terrence and Noel finally decide to date each other, but ultimately break up when Terrence moves to London for work. Now that Terrence is back in Atlanta for Christmas with his new girl, also named Noel, our lead is determined to get him back and say goodbye to being friend zoned forever. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So Jasmine, what did you think of this one? Oh my goodness. Just as we, as me and Dory and I have watched the preview for this, we predicted like this must be some great tea and it's 100% amazing for me. Uh-huh. I enjoyed this movie. I joined the chemistry, um, the buildup with everything was going on. I don't know, just the main character, Noel. Uh, with her brother-in-law, they were just like giving us all this spice. I'm sitting here like, I 100% know this realm and for me because i know some of the characters i've seen in different movies so it's like or tv shows i'm like they actually deliver for me yeah i i enjoyed it overall uh i mean the love like a love triangle is not like my favorite plot device uh and it got a little it was very uh campy i guess is what i would say very uh a little over the tops at times, you know, between the the fighting of the two women and and over this guy, and I'm like, he's not really that great. Why are we fighting over this guy so much? But uh, but definitely, if you're like in the mood for a particular kind of movie, you know, like a, with like a little bit of juice to it, I think that it it could be a, a fun one. I wish that they had spent more time with her and Vincent. Would you agree? Just a little bit, but I love the dynamics of him like, juggling two Noels. One's called L, the other one's called 
like you know no like no like this is gonna be interesting well because so vincent was the guy she ended up with in the end yes and so that's why i would have liked to have seen more with them with her and vincent uh in it because they spend most of the time with her with this relationship with terrence and uh and since i I just would have liked to have seen more of her and vincent but um, but yeah, I mean the the cat fighting between both the Noels is is definitely uh, uh entertaining to watch. Yeah, no, I definitely agree because we have Vincent in the beginning, you know, because he's you know, but because like that is that client, you know, versus like you know, boss situation of like any type of publishing wise, like should I date you? Have not date you? Because she's all focused on her ex not opening up the possibility that there are other candidates, you know, kind of like that client, you know, yeah. wall type thing. But no, I definitely, you know, right in the beginning, the middle-ish and the end, but definitely I would definitely got more um, background about him and, you know, what he did for a living in that sense. Yeah. Did you see the Wesley Christmas, the one from the week before? I did, and I'm waiting for a part two. I'm, I'm, I, I had this open any situations where I'm like, I need to know what happens. <laughs> yeah, I do like I liked that one better. I don't think that the Vietnam plot really worked very well. Like, I it was just too heavy for that kind of movie. I thought, um, and it didn't really. I, so other, but other than that, I I enjoyed that one. I think I liked that one better than this personally. If for I don't know right thing for me right now like where like where um uh, uh, BET is going at this moment like for me like both these movies have like literally um surpassed like my expectations I was I just wonder if like you know I'm not gonna go judge it I'm thinking like it's gonna be like in my mind as still a sock or how I graded it I'm like you know what this is definitely outside the box yeah um the Wesley family because I kind of got the part of like you know being normal where we're happy because he gave us you know it felt a little heavy though but at the same time like we all get these fun you know jolly you know outside the rock but they're kind of giving us a little bit of a you know a miracle of Christmas a little bit with actually you know, something like you know with substance a little bit of a character so I'm like I got what they were doing for that especially if it's involving the holiday time and I'm like, I get that. You know, how everybody's connected. I'm like, why is he here? Why is he still in the camper? <laughs> yeah. But I kind of got it from, you know, perspective how they're all linked together and how they are intertwined. There's more just like, oh, he's just outside and he's staying in trouble. Like, no, he's connected to the family, not knowing he was connected to the family. And it kind of made me like, it's like, okay, wow. Mm-hmm. So what would you give the first Noel? One to five. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to give this um, a four, actually. Okay. I feel like I still wanted, you know, a little bit more, um, not the more drama though, but just more of, you know, fixing the conflicts of like, he should have told her, stuff like that, the way she found out, or I would wait for her to just pop out the door instead of just walking out the door with her stuff. Like, Elle, talking uh-huh. about, oh, like, you know, she left and like she's at the hotel, but you know, I wanted her to pop out the door, like, oh, it caught you in the act versus hearing the act. Right. And, um, I would give this one, I think 3.25. I enjoyed it overall. You kind of have to know what you're getting into, you know, what kind of movie you're watching. Uh, but, uh, Michelle, what do you think? Do we convince you? <laughs> I'm really curious about this one. Um, <laughs> I- I'm not sure what's going on with BAT in the UK because I do have like a service on my, um, on my cable. Um, I guess you guys would call it like a cable service. Uh-huh. Um, there is an app, but there's no movies on it, and there's not a lot of content. So I need to figure out how to get the movies. But I am curious about this one. I really like Todd Anthony. Um, uh, I remember him quite a bit from Black Lightning. Uh, so oh yeah, I am curious to to check this one out and check out all the other ones that the girls previewed. But yeah, I just need mm-hmm. to figure out if anybody knows in the UK how to get the beauty movies. Please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah does that yeah does the app uh is not working over there yeah it works there's just not a lot on it okay. um so i'm not sure if there's like you know a plus service or oh, yeah, anyone yeah, can add is. on yeah so uh, i need to figure that out if that's available in the uk 
Yeah, yeah let us know. Definitely kind of helping us start certain um, apps and like either if it's Netflix or Hulu or anything like that. I know that um, they distribute certain movies that other countries get that they don't have yet. So I know that's having like a, a big like um, issue with some providers when they're doing that issue out certain movies for different countries that maybe you get this, but I don't get it yet. So I definitely understand. Yeah, because like Hulu is supposed to be, is essentially our Disney Plus in the UK. Disney Plus is Disney Plus and Hulu in the UK, but we don't get a lot of the Hulu movie premieres. So it's weird. We have to wait weeks, sometimes months before we get them. So yeah, it's as it strange the way they sort of hold on to movies. Um, I just feel like you should just let people watch what they want to watch. If they're willing to pay for it, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um All right, Uh, let's talk about The Six Degrees of Santa. The song Lifetime on the 13th uh, stars Catherine Davis and Steve Lund, director Michael Kennedy, writer Shannon Latimer. And it's a Christmas enthusiast Harper is the creator of a program, Six Degrees of Santa, where Santas give a gift and set of instructions to be passed along and eventually re-gifted. When he, when her, when her reaches an internet entrepreneur, Jason, he's convinced that the original Santa might be his soulmate. So overall, what do you think about this one, Michelle? Um, I really like this one. Um, I thought it was, again, it was just so difficult to come up with like an original idea uh-huh. for these movies. And I feel like I haven't seen anything like I've seen things like this in other movies, a sort of six degree sort of, you know, pass it along type uh-huh. thing and different types of movies, but I've just not seen them in a Christmas movie before. Um, so I feel like it was very well used. Um, yeah, the writer Shannon Landmer, she's very good about coming up with sort of creative new ideas. Like last year, I've talked about a bunch on the podcast, Ghost of Christmas Past, which was so good that she wrote uh, about you know, this woman having this fortune teller that that tells her that she needs to make amends with everybody she's ghosted online before the end of the year, she won't be able to find love. And uh, that it was such a good story and such a clever idea and like topical without being annoying, you know? And, and uh, so I think that Shannon is just excellent at that of like coming up with creative ideas and also making like office stories where people are kind of planning things and working and like making them entertaining and good because one of those can be really boring. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And I love Catherine. She's just made for these movies. She is so I think dynamic and charismatic on screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. Like I think everybody that follows Rachel watched um, <laughs> Catherine's movie last year. Yeah. Um, you were like convincing everybody to watch the. Yeah. My goal. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. And I, it was just one of those movies kind of like well suited for Christmas that like is so good that, yeah. but it doesn't have, have any, everyone. Like, it doesn't have any big stars. So you feel like if you don't get the word out, like people are going to miss it. So uh-huh. They make my little babies for this season. <laughs> <laughs> but this one was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, the concept. And it's always like a, a fun dynamic when you, it's, it was almost like slightly like a Cyrano mm-hmm. Berger kind of, kind of idea where you'd have like she's setting him up with this other with her neighbor zoe and uh and the whole time she's the one like kind of falling in love with him while he's dating this dating zoe but he's also kind of falling in love with her but he she's told him that zoe is santa number one of, that gave this book with this description but of course it was actually her um uh, and then you know she gets kind of a little bit lost in the lying <laughs> but uh but there were some really cute scenes like the roller skating scene i think is the highlight of this movie yeah yeah that was so funny um i think it's really hard to pull off that type of physical comedy mm-hmm. um and i feel like they've both done such a great job at that well and also it was just refreshing because you know we get so many of these ice skating and it seems like oh that's such a small detail but it was it was it was just like slightly different than the typical trope uh, to be in his office, uh, they're roller skating together, and it was just a cute idea. 
Yeah. I thought. And, uh, and then, and you see like her anxiety continue to increase the more that, uh, the more that he is like dating Zoe, <laughs> but she's the one that suggested it. So she's got to like keep up a front. And I thought she did that very well. <laughs> yeah. And I really like the way that they wrote Zoe as well. Yes. Um, I feel like that character is easy just to make them really sort of insufferable and really superficial but yes she was really fun um yeah. and felt like a an actual like character um i felt like she was given depth i felt like the, the the actress done such a great job and i loved the way that she was just so baffled by the end of the date of like <laughs> him wanting a second date she's just like it was awful <laughs> yeah why is he still interested in me <laughs> yeah well and I loved Steve Lennon in this. He was so good. And that it's like so funny to think of like someone that runs a Christmas tree business being like kind of the bad men of business at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I mean, that's like such a, a hallmark friendly or lifetime friendly uh, career. <laughs> he literally sending people Christmas trees. And it's like the, just because it's online, I guess is the only reason she's like happy at him at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that that their meet cute in the elevator was really fun classic kind of enemies to lovers that you have going on and and uh, he was just very endearing like when he plays santa at the party and the kids he's like well how do i do and my belly laugh and she's like a five out of ten <laughs> he's like oh harsh i thought that was very cute i also thought the baking scene and this was really cute uh they're ma- making cookies with her daughter uh and then we, we have his like assistant elliot and he was kind of funny like he needs to to take a major chill pill <laughs> yeah yeah he was so stressed the entire movie <laughs> yeah. uh he's like interrupting them on their date and everything Can you imagine <laughs> but uh <laughs> Uh, he, he says, "Oh well, you're falling in love with Harper, and uh, and then he he admits it. He's like, yes, it's true to Elliot, and he's like, you two would be adorbs, <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and then yeah, they go on that Elliot and Zoe. They go on that second date, and I mean, they end up Elliot and Zoe end up going on the rest of the date together because he leaves." And uh, he posts this message to her saying that uh, finding home where you're, you least expect it. And I found home with you. So that was pretty, pretty sweet. And, uh, and then you see him outside with the, all these lanterns, paper lanterns. And, uh, and she gets mad at him because he, he p- tries to do a copyright on uh, six degrees of Santa and mm-hmm. she's she thinks that he's like trying to steal it uh but you know explains that he was doing it to try to protect her and protect the the brand and he's not and i was just hoping we could be partners that's what he says <laughs> and uh and she says at first i thought you were the last one for me and it turned out you were the only one <laughs> mm-hmm. that's a good line <laughs> yeah that was a great line yes <laughs> So I enjoyed this one. I thought they had great chemistry. I thought the concept was was fun. Uh, so I would give this one a 4.5. What about you, Michelle? Um, I'm probably going to give it a 3.75. Mm-hmm. It's definitely just as we're talking about it, sort of gone up in my estimations of just when you talk about these movies, you, you <laughs> tend to sort of get in the zone a little bit. <laughs> it's true it's true we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life what about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party now is the time to check out the hallmarkies merch store full of festive designs by artists like jessica miller carrie from hallmark comics and more You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. 
Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. All right. Well, uh, let me give my quick thoughts on the new film Spirited, which you can watch in theaters this week, and then it will be on Apple Plus on the 18th. Uh, This stars Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell and Octavia Spencer. And it's, uh, it's each Christmas Eve, the ghost of Christmas present selects one dark soul to be reformed by a visit from three spirits. But this season he picked the wrong Scrooge Clint Briggs to, and turns the table on his ghostly host until present finds himself reexamining his own past present and future for the first time. A Christmas Carol is told from the perspective of the ghosts in this hilarious musical twist on the classic Dickens tale. I mean, it's, it is pretty amazing that we get the, the ghost story from Hallmark and then this like weeks of weeks apart from each other, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I love both. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie it will depend a lot. Your enjoyment of it will depend a lot on your enjoyment of musicals in general and your enjoyment of Pasek and Paul musicals. So if you hated La La Land and you hated The Greatest Showman, you probably won't like this <laughs> um, because it's the same kind of music. Like it's very kind of old school. Uh, they have almost a gospel sensibility, I think, to their uh, to their arrangements that they do. They're very big and and uh, cheesy, and it's just not for everybody that. Uh, there, you know, if, if you hate Dear Evan Hansen, if you, if you don't like Posca and Paul's music, you won't like this movie. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. I do like their music. I like all of those things I just mentioned uh, to varying degrees. And uh, so I really enjoyed the music. There is a lot of songs in this movie there. And the choreography is so fun and impressive. And you know, me with musicals, I'm a sucker. So, so easy sell. It does get a little convoluted at a certain point. They're like in uh, Ryan's past and then flipping back to Will Ferrell's past and, and the timelines get kind of mixed. And I feel like they overcomplicated it more than they needed to. Like, I actually do think as far as a script, the hallmark is a better script, but obviously that one doesn't have like, Posse and Paul songs. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, I, I mean, Octavia Spencer, she's great, of course. And she's probably the best singer in the movie. Um, well, I mean, it has um, Patrick Page, who's a Broadway singer, but um, he's, so he's great. But, um, but uh, as far as the main leads, I think she's the best out of the, the main leads. And uh, so definitely if you're in the mood for something different, uh, a lot of fun, very warm hearted. Um, then, uh, then, uh, you should check this one out either in theaters. If you can, it's a very theatrical movie because of all the big choreography and everything. So if it's playing by you this week, I would highly recommend going to see it in the theater. Um, but if you can't watch it on Apple plus, uh, it will still be a, a nice little, uh, diversion for this holiday season so what do you think uh, michelle did i convince you oh uh, yeah i was already convinced the second <laughs> i even heard about this movie yeah i'm a huge fan of passing and paul i love everything they've written so far mm-hmm. that their music is i'm just such a sucker for their music and yeah. i understand why people it's, it's just not for some people but for me like i think for like three years running like Dear Evan Hansen was on my Spotify wrapped at the end of every year. It was like the top. Ben Platt has just sort of been my number one artist for like three or four years running, um, mainly due to Dear Evan Hansen. So, yeah, I'm so in on this and I definitely want to see it in the cinema if I get time. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel like I have to see Blank Path. Of course. Once I've seen that, I can go see Spirited. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I just don't have a lot of time now to see, go to the cinema, but I feel like for these ones, especially with a lot of choreography, I really want to see it on the big screen. Yeah, I want to see it because I actually would just watched a screener link. And so I really want to see it on the big screen too, because I haven't yet gotten to do that. But but yeah, what do you think, Jasmine? Do we convince you? I think I am so because mind you, Will Ferrell, like one of my favorite Will Ferrell movies of all time, will forever be Blaze of Glory. If he gave me Blaze of Glory within this spirit movie of the vibe, you can just buy the um 
the promo uh, posters for the movie, I'm like, okay, this is. Oh, I can see why you think that it's not as certainly not as vulgar or as um, silly as Blades yeah. of Glory, like, but um, but him and Ryan Reynolds do have really nice chemistry. They it's and it's there's definitely a theme of friendship in the movie okay. like that. Yeah, okay, definitely. This would definitely be like my double feature where I will watch Black Panther two and, bef- and after that watch Spirit two. Oh, that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do that double that feature combo, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the <that> order. <laughs> Very good. All right, so have. Uh, next we have dog days of christmas and that is on the 11th and it stars georgia flood ezekiel simon and it's a blake helps three stray dogs get adopted while home for the holidays once he runs into local veterinarian and former high school debate partner dylan the duo team up to save an animal rescue and this is the one you were saying michelle has like four different titles uh, yeah, it is three now. I think there's, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I end up finding another one. Um, so one is called Sit, Play, Run, and then we have Dog Days of Christmas. And then what was the other one? Do you remember the other one? Uh, I think it's Puppy Love for Christmas, mm. uh, Sit, Stay, Love. And yeah, there was just a lot of titles for this movie. <laughs> I think that, that Puppy Love for Christmas is better, is the best. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm dog days of Christmas. I gave this a call in the preview because I I don't know if I was just too hung up on the title because I think of when I hear the phrase dog days, I think of like, like, yes, I don't know. Bad, like something bad, (laughs) like a dog day. I'm in the dog days of summer. It's like the hottest time, the worst time. So, like, I thought it was a strange title for the movie and it just sounded kind of blah to me um so maybe i it was helped by low expectations <laughs> but actually i'm enjoying it i thought it was cute i really liked it um like i said i'd seen it before january period where you're trying to sort of catch up on all the ones that are sort of sitting on the dvr and just you just want to clear the <laughs> clear all of the christmas movies out before you sort of yeah start the new year so yeah i definitely just just got buried with everything that I was watching at that time but yeah as I sat and watched it um just last night it all just came back because like you said I am such a big um (laughs) dog person Mm -hmm. um I just live for my dog so yeah this was just made for me in terms of that aspect and I also just feel like Georgia Flood's like I was just looking at her IMDb. I, I don't understand why she's not in more of these movies. She's so like unique in terms of just her whole energy. Uh-huh. Um, with these TV movies, I feel like we need someone like her in the same way that we need people like, um, oh gosh, uh, like you know Sarah Hi- Sarah from uh, Sarah Ramos. Um, oh yeah just people they, like that or Re- it, it, Rhiannon Fish I feel like she has kind of a similar energy to Rhiannon yeah Fish. yeah just yeah just like something a little bit different mm-hmm. um but yeah because she just Georgia Flood just had so many like fun um reactions and expressions and yeah the way like her eyes would cross when she was like overwhelmed with something or just you know she just had a lot of mannerisms that you don't typically see in these types of movies and I just feel like it's so refreshing and it feels a little bit more relatable um so yeah I really like Mm -hmm. this one yeah both of these leads I thought were very charming and I definitely hope to see more of both of them I thought they were very charismatic and sweet and yeah and she had that kind of bubbly cute almost Reese Witherspoony kind of like sweet energy to her I thought yeah yeah for sure because there's not like a ton of plot to this movie um so they really needed to kind of bring it in the performances and they did yeah she just wanted to save some dogs that was it yeah yeah and uh she gets this job promotion i liked the fact that when she gets the job promotion he was just like congrats if i don't Mm -hmm. see you goodbye like he wasn't all like oh you're leaving you know whatever like because they just met i mean i don't know like it was it was a like you tell he was a little sad but but not like ridiculous yeah, he wasn't yeah, like, I can't believe you're not giving up all your life and dreams yeah. <laughs> for this relationship. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you knew as soon as she adopted, I mean, as soon as she fostered those three, those three dogs, she was gone, gone for. That was going to be a foster fail. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, there was no way she was giving up those docs. No <laughs> yeah, when, when, it, when it got to the point of you have to go through a five page application where almost every question is an essay, you're not right. giving up those docs. No way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, then uh, they have like cute little scenes there's a tree lighting scene it's very cozy and then there's a uh, scene where they're painting the barn uh and that was uh that was cute and uh she's working on this like charity for animals Mm -hmm. and uh and that's when she finds out because she's been like a world traveler she's gone all over the place beginning she's come back from nepal uh and uh and to see her sister and she's been gone for a for a while and and then yeah she gets this job promotion but she decides that she's gonna stay there she's like i think i can make a difference right here i don't have to go which i thought made Mm -hmm. sense for her character it wasn't her just like i love you and so i'm staying here which would be fine in, if it's done well. But uh, but this, it made sense for her character that she's like, I'm not leaving these dogs and I am not leaving this place and I can do a lot of good work here. Yeah, and it was also just sort of interest in the relationship with her and her dad um, because initially you felt a little bit, oh, she's being really, you know, closed off and not really wanting to spend time with him. And, yeah, you know, it really true. just turns out that she just, can't bear seeing her dad without her mom and I just thought that was a really interesting way Mm -hmm. to talk about grief and yeah you know the reason that she'd been gone for so long it's true and when they do that like uh group hug when she tells them and everybody's like "Ah!" (laughs) that was adorable yeah yeah that was very like this year (laughs) (laughs) yeah they're a big group hug family I think it happens like two or three times in this movie (laughs) That's really fun. Uh, and then he says, my greatest wish is that you would be, you will be with me. And it was mm-hmm. cute. Yeah. So then, uh, so I, yeah, I would give this one a 3.5. I, I was, and like I said, I gave it a coal. So I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll go with a 3.5 as well. Mm-hmm. So Jasmine, we convince you to watch these lifetime movies. Lizzie, you have convinced me. I'm not. I'm, I'm not crazy about the title. I feel like the titles could have been a little more better. I yeah, think of I dog agree. Days. I'm not gonna lie. I think of dog days. I think of like my time at at my alma mater at college, where like our orientation for like incoming students called Dog Days. So I'm like, yeah. Um, we're not going to a college for Christmas. Like, don't think of it that way. <laughs> but I feel like the title could have been de- definitely could have been bumped up a notch. Yeah, they should have gone with the puppy title. There's no question. Mm-hmm. because yeah I, I do i feel like dog days is negative mm-hmm. excuse negative so yeah but, something where it, like yeah i'm traveling but yeah the fact the puppies will keep her ground like i've been traveling though but i have a puppy now <laughs> yeah <laughs> so there we go we did it we talked about the non-hallmark movies for this weekend uh let us for this last weekend so let us know what you think did you get to watch any of these we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section on twitter and michelle how can people find you um on twitter at michelle r benson great you can find me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and on ron tomatoes check that out jasmine how can people find you uh people can find me on twitter and instagram at shereem 16 great and make sure you're all following the podcast a hallmarkies pod and hallmarkies podcast all of our social media and if you are listening on itunes please leave your ratings and reviews that really helps us a lot and if you are listening on youtube please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel we are almost at 5k subscribers so please help us out there and we've been doing a lot of a lot more shorts and other sp- as special uh, videos exclusive to YouTube. So definitely want to check that out. Also make sure that you check out the Patreon. It really helps us so much. It's the biggest way that you can support us. Uh, and we have really nice benefits for uh, being a, a patron. So please take a look at that. And then we also have the merch store where we have tons of new holiday designs, including you can get your team shirt uh, for team Andrew, for the th- uh, team Tyler and team Paul for the three wise men. And we have all three. So you definitely want to check out the merch store. It's a, it's a great place to get your holiday shopping for the Hallmark fan in your life done. So thanks so much, ladies. I really appreciate it. And we'll talk to y'all later. Merry Christmas. 
Merry Christmas.